Hi, and welcome to Saturday Night Spiritual. I'm Reverend Sheena Metal, and I am the interfaith pastor at the Founders Church, the MCC denomination, Founders MCC. And uh, some exciting things. One, it's Pride Weekend. Happy Pride to all my uh, LGBTQIAA. 2SP. Did I do that right? I think I did it the right letters, but in the wrong order. I'll try it later. Um, happy Pride. Um, I am a, a B bisexual, a P pansexual, I intersex. So that's all my stuff. Um, I identify as she, her, but I do love my pride people. And I'm wearing my, my favorite pride color, which is purple. So uh, welcome everybody, exciting to be here on Pride Weekend. The second big exciting thing is that today is the five year anniversary of Saturday Night Spiritual. Um, five years ago, we, we went in the basement of the church. There's a wonderful black box theater in the basement of the Founders Church. And we threw up a camera. I was working with a sound and lighting guy that, and, and a camera guy I had never met. Um, a friend brought an iPhone and I invited some people and we threw a little church to see how it would go. And here we are five years later. So that's very exciting. And I'm going to have an announcement coming up, but I, this, I'm just teasing it here for the first time as my gift to founders MCC. Um, I don't have it yet, but I'm working on a special surprise gift to the church to thank them for five years of Saturday Night Spiritual. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. So I'm excited about that. So that's something to look forward to that we will um, probably, uh, I will do a Saturday Night Spiritual around that surprise when that surprise happens. So welcome, this is an interfaith service. I like to call it a universal light-based, love-filled service. Um, it's for everyone. I say this all the time, but to me, the MCC denomination and the Founders Church are what my mama used to call a y'all come church. Primarily, we are a progressive Christian church, but certainly no matter what you believe or who you are, or even if you don't believe in anything past the three dimensions, you are always welcome to come to any of our services, not just the interfaith service, but our Sunday service in English and our Sunday service in Spanish. And you are welcome to come and enjoy the music and the hugs and the handshakes and the good word. And you are welcome to take communion if you want or not and meet some friends and have a snack. Um, it's not about um, what you believe. It's about are you willing to come and bring the love inside of you to share with the love inside of others. And that's very much the heart of what Saturday Night Spiritual is about too. If you wanna visit us online, our community page is at saturdaynightspiritual.com. And if you wanna watch some past services, I have an archive page, revshinafoundersmcc.com. And then of course our church site, the most important, foundersmcc.org. And we have a great Facebook page and a great YouTube page where you can watch a lot of stuff. Um, talking about pride this month, which we will continue to, one of the things that makes me the saddest is when my queer brothers and sisters and humans, non-binary and, and hu however you identify um, gender wise, when my, my, my queer peeps, as I like to call you, um, walk away from spirit because some church founded by humans has told you that you don't belong because of who you are. And, um, you know, there's an expression, don't throw the baby out with a bathwater. And it's, you know, don't throw God out because a person told you you don't belong in their church. Because our relationship with spirit, it's one of the most important relationships that we have in the world. And you are exactly, you know, the expression you are as God made you. You are exactly as the universe has designed you. And there's nothing wrong with you. There are no mistakes. People say, well, what about trans people? There's no mistakes. Um, Spirit didn't make a mistake when a trans man was born 
outwardly as a woman. It's just that part of his journey was to be born in one body and find his true self in another. Like the butterfly is the caterpillar. Like the moth is the caterpillar. Um, when something happens, like you're sick or you lose someone you love or you're grieving or you're sad, it's because you are learning how to become a stronger soul. So then you can enlighten others, but there are no accidents. So the way you are is the way universe has designed you. And when you get angry because human beings tell you if you're this or that, you don't belong here. Um, that's humans and humans do too much of this and not enough listening, too much outputting, not enough inputting. That's a problem with human beings. We're a relatively new species and we're working on it. Um, but that doesn't come from spirit. Spirit isn't saying, tell the gay people they're not welcome. It's not like that. There's nowhere in the Bible where Jesus says gay people are bad. That's a myth. There is nowhere. It's fake news. There is no, nowhere, anywhere where Jesus or Buddha or anybody said no to the queers doesn't exist. Fake news. So um, don't let people tell you you don't belong somewhere. Like well, you're a gay Christian. People say that all the time. I hear people say that to people all the time. What? Well, why not? I think that Jesus would have walked proudly with the rainbow flag and probably would have worn the rainbow wrap um, when he when it was Pride Week. Um, I think that Jesus would have folded um, any queer disciples in to be part of his posse. I don't think there's anything uh, about Christianity um, as Jesus intended it. What my mama used to call, she used to say, I'm a teachings of Christ Christian. And I used to love when she said that because she was so much about the teachings of Jesus, but so little about how it had been organized as humans. So think about that. You're not, you're welcome everywhere. You're welcome anywhere you want to go. And you should be brimming with pride. And that's a lot about oh, what I want to talk about this month because it is pride month is be brimming with pride. I am brimming with pride to be a queer person. I am brimming with pride to be a member of Founders MCC. I am brimming with pride to be a pastor, a staff pastor at Founders MCC. I am brimming with pride to, to be helming this service once a month, every second Saturday of the month at five o'clock Pacific time for Founders MCC. I am filled with pride. You should be brimming with pride about so many things in your life. But, you know, humans tell us, right? Don't be proud. Don't be too prideful. You, you act too proud. Don't be proud. We need to be more proud. Um, it feels good to have pride in things. I'm Irish American. I am so proud of being Irish. There are fairies in the house, leprechauns, Irish flags. I wear a clatta. Um, I have Irish charms around my neck. I My mama was proud to be Irish. Thanks to 23andMe, she, we know she was 100%. I am proud to be Irish. Um, I did not know who my father was. Two years ago, I found out that my father was Italian. Um, I'm learning to be proud to be Italian. It's a whole new thing, but I'm learning to get into it and uh, get excited about being Italian and going to Italy someday. You should be brimming with pride for all the things that you are that make you happy. That's how life should be. We shouldn't feel shame. We should feel proud. And that's the whole idea behind gay pride is that, you know, that one weekend a month, a year in your area, and luckily for an area that is urban, there are a lot of prides. You can go to a lot of them. You go and you celebrate the beauty of being proud to be queer. Now, here's something else I'm very proud of. I am proud to be this guy's mom. I am a very proud cat mom. I don't think that cat fur moms should be treated any differently than moms of human children. And every time I see this little guy, I'm so proud to be his mama because he's such a lovely little gentleman and he makes me happy. 
and um, he's just about as queer as queer can be. He's my little gender neutral man, and I love that about him. He's my non-binary boy. He's the most special, special child that, that ever lived, and I'm proud to be his mom. I am proud to be friends to all my friends. I'm proud to have a beautiful, that my two best friends have provided me with a beautiful niece and a beautiful nephew that I love so much. I'm proud to be able to use my voice to share it with the world and to share good messages and to share messages from spirit and to share messages from my mother who is now in spirit, who is so beautiful and so brilliant. And there's nothing wrong with the feelings of pride. So what about you? What are, what are you proud of? What makes you happy? What makes you feel pride? Um, what are you proud of in your life? And don't think of that as something that you should be embarrassed about or, oh, I, you know, I shouldn't say that's okay. Or I was having a conversation with a client of mine who's an actor a few weeks ago, and we were talking about the idea of, you know, being proud of the things that you are as an actor, which is what you put in what actors call your actor's toolkit, right? I'm proud to be good looking. I'm proud that I can do different dialects. I'm proud that I can... I can, uh, you know, do stage combat or I can do stunts or I can dance or I can sing or I can, I can meld into different characters and you don't know who I am. And, and he was very resistant to this idea that you should say that you're proud because he thought that pride was, was the same as ego. But you have to remember there's, there's good ego and there's bad ego. So healthy ego, good ego. That's what pride is all about. It's about looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what? I, I dig you. I think you're awesome. I like you. I'm, I'm happy to be you. I'm happy to be in this meat suit and be you. And, and I'm a happy person and I love my life. Um, being unhealthy ego. Oh my goodness. Alexa, stop. That's how you know it's live. I don't know why Alexa turns on sometimes and tells me something I don't want to hear, but it happens. Um, I, I hurt my leg very badly. I was in a fall um, five weeks ago, and so I have an eight-week recovery. So this is what I like to call Studio 2, the annex. I'm not in my normal studio. I'm here on my bed, which is why I don't have all the delicious stars and moons behind me. I'm not floating in the galaxy today. I am floating on my bed. And so I'm in the same room as where Alexa is. And <laughs> she gives me surprise messages that I don't necessarily want. Um, which is also why we got a visit from Colin the cat. He's like, oh, hey, you're on our bed. Um, so good ego is I'm happy to be me. I'm happy to be in me. I'm happy the things I've done. I'm happy to be a person who other people in my life like to call me friend. That is what it's like to be a healthy ego. Unhealthy ego is I'm better than you. I'm better than everyone. My way is right. I belong and others don't belong. That's unhealthy ego. Healthy ego is um, I'm great. I respect me. I respect you. And I'm happy with myself. Um, that's a place we all need to get to that place. that place of happy ego, that place of feeling really good about who we are. That is such a great place to be. And um, that is what pride is about. So when you go to gay pride, and I'm sure many of you have been there, but probably a lot of my people that are watching this have never been to a gay pride. My outside of the founders, MCC folks in my life. So, um, if you are going to a gay pride, you're not there to say, oh, uh, gay people are great and everybody else is terrible. Or, you know, I'm here because I'm the best and I'm, I'm going to gay pride so people think I'm the hottest. No, you, you go because you want to be proud of who you are. And you say, I love me and I love you for loving you. I love me for loving me. And here we all are together doing our thing, which is kind of when you think about it, the root of interfaith spirituality, right? Which is basically, I believe this, and I love that about me. You believe that, 
And I love that about you. And you love that about you. And some of the things that you believe, I also believe. Some of the things that you believe, I don't believe. But I believe in your right to believe them. And that's what interfaith spirituality is. I might not believe everything that you believe. But I believe in your right to believe them. And I believe that it's wonderful that you have beliefs and you have a belief system and you sat down and you figured out what you believe. And Cullen believes that he loves his mommy. And, you know, it's interesting living with a fur person. You see one of the things that you see when you live with a fur baby or a feathered baby is how right they are with God. They live in this place of Zen where they're in constant communication with spirit and you can see it when you look at them and they're, they're good to give you all their love. They're good. If you love them back, they're happy with their day-to-day lives and they're pretty much groovy all the time. This one does require 20 to 30 snuggle sessions a day, but some of them don't even require that. She's going to crawl up in my lap while I'm doing this sermon and then he's going to fall asleep because that's what he does. Um, But it's fascinating to me. And it always has been how I've always had animals my whole life, how right they are with God, how everything is so simple with them. We have so many problems, you know, is what we believe real? Does God love us back? Um, What about what my neighbor believes? Are these people going to judge me because of what I believe? Do you think that this cat cares one twiddle whether or not the cat next door believes what he believes or approves of him? No, because all he cares about is he's right with God and he's right with his mama. And that's all he needs. Can you imagine how beautiful the world would be if we could all just be in that place? Where all that mattered to us was that somebody loved us and we were right with God. I mean, unbelievable. So that's a place that I try to get people to um, through interfaith spirituality is, you know, great. Somebody wants to believe something. Fantastic. And people come up to me sometimes and say, can you believe what so-and-so believes? Have you, have you heard about this new thing people believe? Okay. I mean, sometimes I look at it and I go, oh, that's out there. But sometimes I start to think about it. And I'm like, oh, oh, I get that. And it might not become part of my personal belief system, but I understand why it could be part of someone's belief system. Um, sometimes I hear things and I think, oh, there's no way. But if, if that's what speaks to you, then I celebrate you because that speaks to you. I think that's amazing that that speaks to you. So much of life is letting people be who they are and you be who you are. And then we can all be who we are in the same space. And I think that's very much the root of pride. You know, when pride first started, whether you were gay or lesbian or bisexual or trans people were just starting to get a voice in the, in the early seventies, it was kind of about come and be who you are, right? If you're, um, you know, lean more to the masculine, lean more to the feminine, if you're slight or if you're very, you know, built, if you are athletic or non-athletic, short hair, long hair, if you're dressed very masculine or you're dressed very feminine, it's, it's just be who you are. We're all queer and we're all together, right? We're here, we're queer, we used to say. Um, and my friend always says cheers for queers, which I just love. Every time I toast now, I think of her saying cheers for queers. Um, we all kind of came together to this place of we're all doing our thing. And who was also there? were all of our allied friends, all of our straight friends that were wonderful. And some of them felt more comfortable with their queer friends than they did with straight folks because they were artists or they were psychics or they, they had alternative spirituality or for whatever reason they were, they were differently abled. For whatever reason, they felt like they didn't fit in. 
So they came and hung out with us and we all sit together and nobody went through the pride saying, wait a minute, who's actually gay? Who's a lesbian? Who's bisexual? Who's straight? Nobody cared. Everybody just brought their rainbows and their fabulousness and their fun. And we marched and we partied and we laughed and we played a lot of music and it was amazing. That really is a microcosm for what the earth should be. The earth should be all of us come. We all bring our rainbow. We all have a rainbow inside of us. I did a sermon about this once a few years ago. We all have a rainbow inside of us. It's called our chakra system. We all have a crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, solar plexus chakra, sacral chakra, root chakra. Don't you wish you could see me point to the bottom ones? Nope, it's a family show. Um, each one represents a different energy and a different color. So there is literally, if you have an oral photography done for you, or, there, or, or a shock roll photography done for you, you will see that you are made up of a rainbow of colors. And isn't that the most beautiful thing? So we all carry a rainbow. So all of us should be going to our human pride celebration every day, bringing our own rainbow and the things inside of us that are fabulous, whatever those things are, to share with the fabulousness of us with the fabulousness of others. So when people say, oh, but do we still need prides? And what's pride about? And should we still use the word pride? And is that okay? Pride is a beautiful word because we should always be brimming with pride. One of the very first steps to us really, really caring about others is us learning to care about ourselves. That's where it all begins. When we care about ourselves, we then have the ability to care about others. But it all starts with us. It all starts with self-love such an important thing, self-love. And that's where it all begins. Um, and part of that journey to self-love is defining the pride for yourself, inside of yourself, within yourself. It's like, um, you know, if you're unhealthy, you can't donate blood. If you're unhealthy, if you have a virus and no one wants you to come into a place where there's sick children or sick or sick older folks. Um, if you are mentally not well because of grief or heartbreak or something happens inside of you, people will tell you, don't come into work, wait until you feel better. Because when you're not feeling good within you, you don't have a lot to give to other people. So if you're going through your whole life and you're not loving you and you're not recharging your battery and you're not filling yourself up with light, then you don't have a lot to share with other people. One of the things that makes gay pride so much fun is that People come feeling their best about themselves. People wait all year round. They pick out the outfit. Sometimes people go to a city and they get a hotel. They, they gather their friends. They, they ascend upon the pride. And it's something they've been looking forward to for a year. And they, you know, they bring money and they put beads around their neck. They bring money to buy things and drinks and beads around their neck. So they... They sparkle and shine and they bring all of that love and all of that goodness and all of that beauty to another place where there are other people, some they know, some they've never met. And it's like they bring a rainbow. They bring a wall of light, a ball of light, a tsunami of light to share with others. And then others take all that in. So that whole weekend, 
you're exchanging love and you're exchanging energy and you're exchanging light. And the pride in someone else grows the pride within you. And you go home elated from having touched all those other beautiful light-filled energies. And other people go home feeling a little bit more elated from touching yours. And that is why I'm saying that we should always be brimming with pride. And that wouldn't it be great if life was like a giant pride weekend where everybody was feeling their best and everybody was pumped up on themselves. And there's probably some people watching right now that are going to say, oh, that's unhealthy, going into some place, being all pumped up on yourself. No, actually, um, we should all be pumped up on ourselves all the time. Do you know how much more beautiful the world would be if everyone was pumped up on themselves? Most of the things in the world that have happened that are not great have happened because somebody was angry or upset or violent or dangerous. And it usually stems to self-loathing of some kind. Usually comes down to the self-loathing. So if everybody had pride in themselves and felt good about themselves, the world would be 500% different almost instantaneously. So try that, practice that, not just through this LA Pride weekend and all the prides that go on through the summer, but practice it just in general. Keep practicing it. Keep practicing growing the, the vibe inside of you till you are brimming with pride. And sharing that feeling of pride with others, hoping that it will inspire them to be filled with more pride within them. I mean, it's really that simple. I know it sounds a little out there, but I think that human beings are culturalized in many instances to believe that self-love is an egomaniacal thing. Oh yeah, you love yourself. It's like a selfish thing. It's going around like, oh, I love myself. Like I think I'm the best thing because I love myself. It's not, it's not like that. Self-love is the most selfless thing that you can do for the world. Because when you love yourself, you love harder on others. And when you love yourself, you give more to the world. And when you love yourself, you take less from the world that is not replenished. You give more than you take. And you bring a vibe that is so high that it encourages others to raise their own vibrations up. And all it takes is self-love. All it takes is liking you. All it takes is understanding that your love for you inspires other love, others to love themselves. And then that contagious love and light spreads across the world like a wildfire and it's beautiful unlike a wildfire which is not beautiful so if you want to um if you want to donate a little something today and and help us to help you to help others because uh, founders mcc does so much community outreach so anything that you donate to us is going to help us help somebody else and in turn, you're helping somebody else. Um, you go to foundersmcc.org, or the best way is you can text 77977. Make sure to mention that you like Saturday Night Spiritual. I have to say that. Um, you like me. You really like me. I have to say that because um, um, I guess they want to know somebody's watching. Um, but uh, that's part of helping, right? You, you got something from this service. You send something to the church. The church helps someone who needs it. Hopefully they then help someone else. And it just continues to compile and compile and compile until the light quotient around the world is huge. And that's why you should always be brimming with pride. And that's why prides are so important because history is important. Look, even if we don't need prides right now, in order for the straight world to acknowledge queer people, in order for to see queer faces and voices in media, um, 
in order to have laws that allow uh, queer marriage, all, all of those. Let's say we don't need prides for that anymore like we used to. And I'll go with that. What if prides don't exist anymore because we need them? What if prides now exist because we want them? Because we want a place to gather with like-minded souls of all of the letters of the queer alphabet, the gays, the lesbians, the bisexuals, the transgender people, the intersex people, the, the queer people, the questioning people, the two-spirit people, the pansexual people, the asexual people, and the allied people. What if we're gathering, and, and the allied people meaning, you know, our straight friends, what if we're gathering with all these like-minded souls, not because we have to, because we have to show the world that queer people are real or queer people are here, but what if past prides have done that? What if we celebrate pride to remember those in the, the past that fought so hard, those in a generation before mine that fought so hard for queer faces and voices to become visible? And we look back and celebrate them during Pride. But what if also what Pride represents is we no longer need Prides to be visible, but we want Prides because we want to be visible to each other. We want to get together, celebrate our past, celebrate the present, celebrate our future, and have a great party a great loving celebration of over brimming with pride in ourselves and, and who we are and being happy with who you are and surrounding yourself with like-minded people that you love. I mean, I think we underestimate how important those things are. You know, um, I spend, uh, many nights of the week um, with my best friend and usually her, her husband her, or some of her family, her niece or her son or whomever is there, other friends. And every night, if I can, I try to go by there and spend just a, you know, a couple hours in a way to bond with somebody who has chosen to have me in their life as a person that they love. Um, I take that very seriously. I try every day to touch base with my best friend from high school, who is also like my sister, just to say, hey, you know what? You've loved me since I was 14, and I appreciate you for that. Sometimes celebrations are just about touching base with like-minded people, whether we know them or not, and saying, hey, I'm, I'm celebrating that you're on the earth. And I think that's part of how you are brimming with pride. You should celebrate every morning when you wake up that you got another day on the earth. And you should celebrate that people that you love are on the earth today. And that communities you belong to are validated and ideas that you have are recognized and your spiritual ideologies are accepted. Um, all of these things, right, are beautiful. It's all part of brimming with pride. I'm so proud to be a citizen of the earth. I know people go, all oh, this world. Look what we've done to it. Look how people are. I'm proud to be a citizen of this earth. I think this rock rocks. I think the earth is beautiful. I think it's special. I think sometimes it pushes back because maybe we haven't treated it that great. It's a little angry, but it has a right to be. Um, I mostly love all of the animals. I mostly try to love all the people. I do believe in good. I believe most people are kind and good. Are they trying? They're trying. And I'm proud to be an earthly being. I'm proud to be 
a citizen of the United States of America. Again, all this country. I don't know. I see on Facebook every day, I'm moving to Mexico. We're moving to Canada. Like, you want to move to Canada, Mexico? I thought about moving to Ireland. Not because I did anything wrong with the USA, just because it's Ireland. Um, but, but I love being here and I stay here because I believe this country needs me and I'm proud to be a citizen of the United States. I'm proud to have been born in one of the original 13 colonies, Connecticut, and to have grown up around all of that rich early American history. Has this country done things that weren't great? Sure. Has, are there things going on in this country now that are a little eyebrow raising? Sure. Um, are there also tons of good people trying to make the country better all the time? Absolutely. I'm proud. I'm proud to be a, a citizen of California. I think it's a beautiful state. I've lived here for 44 years this summer. I love it so much. I, I love to be a, a, a citizen of Los Angeles and I love to be a citizen of my hometown of Huntington Beach, about an hour south of Los Angeles both of which I live back and forth between both. Um, I love to be part of my friend circle. I'm so proud of my friends. I'm so proud of the artistic community, the, the radio community, the spiritual community, all the things I belong to. Boy, that makes me proud. That's a good exercise. Sit down and think about everything you're proud of. What are you proud to be a part of in your life? And, and relish that. Because there's so much to be proud of here. And you should just be brimming with pride all the time. And I hope that hits you in a special place. Um, I'm Sheena Metal and Reverend Sheena Metal. I'm a staff pastor and the interfaith pastor at Founders MCC. We're at foundersmcc.org. And we're at uh, on Facebook. We're on YouTube. I am also on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, and X at Sheena Metal. My website is SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. Reach out. I'd love to hear from you. I thank you for watching. Happy Pride Weekend. Until I see you next month, seek peace, live in love, lead with kindness, embrace unity. Always work to keep your vibration high and remember that you are love and you are loved and you're loved by spirit and you're loved by us here at Founders MCC, and you're loved by me. I hope you have a great Pride weekend. Be brimming with pride in all that is you. I'm Reverend Sheena, and I'll see you next time. You take care of you. Thank you to everyone at Founders MCC, our senior pastor, Keith Mazingo, for having me. We'll see you next time.